Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video by ThePilotReport.com. I'm your host, Len Costa. Now, today's video is part of our interview series called Notice to Airmen, where I'll be speaking with various aviation business owners and professionals and asking them to share some information about their products and services. Now, on the call with me today is Michael Ladd of PICsupplies.com. Glad to have you on today with us, Mike. Thanks, Len. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So I understand that you've come up with an idea for a iPad kneeboard. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it actually started a little over a year ago, or almost a year ago, when they first announced the, uh, that the iPad was coming out. Um, and then after seeing some other products, such as ForeFlight, when they first came out with their release, uh, that's kind of where the idea started, that I would like to use this in a plane mm-hmm. without just having a, uh, you know, a standard iPad case and attach a, a strap to it. I kind of wanted something designed as a kneeboard to also carry the iPad. And that's what we came up with eventually. <clears throat> it took a, a lot of time to uh, trial and error and different people to help us manufacture this thing. But we're, uh, we're currently ready to start rolling these things out in about two weeks. Oh, awesome. Two weeks. Great. So you've yep. been working on this project for about a year, you say? Yeah, pretty much since, uh, pretty much since April. So okay. it's been a lot of trial and error and a lot of uh, learning. I've never gone through manufacturing before as far as the business side of it. Um, I'm pretty much an IT guy, so I can do a lot of the little things myself. But mm-hmm. it was kind of tough to learn how to <laughs> all the ins and outs of manufacturing and who to get to uh, build these things and how to get them built and limitations that we had on the manufacturing based on who we were dealing with. Okay. Now, um, I understand you also have a prototype that you can maybe give us a sneak preview of right today. Yeah, I do, actually. Um, and that is it right there. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about the product, maybe uh, you know what it's made out of and, and, and what exactly you know, the design is like. It's a, uh, well, it's made out of corduroy nylon. Okay. Um, it's very strong, very uh, durable, um, but it's very light. It's also padded. Um, it does have a front pocket, as you can see. I typically carry my uh, an extra cable. I have a little uh, juice pack that I have just in case my battery goes dead. I don't have a place to recharge it. Okay. So I got that in the front pocket, you know, my charts, and even my airport badge. So okay. <laughs> I keep all that in there, and that's the front of it in the pocket. There is a pen holder on the side. Okay. Um, and then as you open it up, there is a obviously the iPad over here mm-hmm. and some elastic straps to pretty much allow you to do whatever you want over here. Um, I typically keep some pre-flight uh, pad mm-hmm. and a checklist in here. Okay. So you can see underneath there I got my checklist and the pad over here. And it's just elastic straps allow you to do pretty much whatever you want. You can put an E6B in there. Well, we definitely don't recommend keeping it in there while it's closed. Right. Unless it's one of the paper ones. But you can pretty much put whatever you want in there or a combination of things between that and the front of it. With uh, I, I, One of the things that I was really concerned about was people just using iPads in flight. And I also didn't want two cases. I didn't want a kneeboard for the iPad and another knee board for my notes and my flight planning and my clearances and everything else. I wanted one de- piece, one device for everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there are some little other features in here. The uh, There is a Velcro on the inside. Mm-hmm. And what that will allow you to do is actually use the strap to keep it on end. Oh, okay, great. So if you wanted to watch a movie or something, it'll stay there without mm-hmm. sliding. Mm-hmm. Um, or a presentation you wanted to give or something along those lines. That allows it to stay up on an angle without sliding. And the other neat thing is some people, you know, just like a typical kneeboard, the strap will go, you know, for most people on your right leg, you know, where your writing surface would be, and then other stuff on the left side. Mm-hmm. Um some people, I found out, still want to be able to use a notepad as a primary writing device. Okay. So what you can do is literally put this back in upside down. If you've got a little OCD like me and you like the home button to always be, you know, facing you, mm-hmm. you now have this you can put on your right leg, or excuse me, your left leg, and this could be your primary writing instrument on your, on your, on your, on your right leg. 
this would be your left leg. Yes. I'm looking at it backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Very cool. And uh, you have access to all your ports, even when it's inverted. You still have access to all your buttons and ports mm -hmm. on all the sides. So even the speaker, your volume control, everything else you have access to, regardless of if it's in right side up or upside down. Okay. So you have access to all that. And that also allows you to put the pad back in on the other side. And again, you now have your writing surface on your right leg if you want mm -hmm. as your primary instrument. It's kind of allowed people to use it for both uh, lefties and righties, whichever, whatever they're dominantly, what hand they want to use while they're, while they're flying. Mm -hmm. And whichever writing surface they want, either the, I, the iPad itself or the the notepad. Okay. So tell us how, you know, what was your first experience in, in your first prototype? Is, is this the actual first, uh, you know, first version or have you gone through a few before getting to where you're at right now? Yeah, we've, we've gone through a few of them. Yes. Um, and this is pretty much the last one. There's a couple small little details, um, you know, the, that are very minor, just some cosmetic things that mm -hmm. I didn't think were really needed. Um, but that's, this is pretty much the final one. Okay. It's gonna the look and feel. Everything will be the same. Uh, so basically, when you came up with uh, you know the different variants in between, did you actually get out flying with them and testing them out, or is it more of uh, just kind of getting a feel for what you thought the features, uh, how they were working out? I have, and uh, well, it was a little bit of both. It was talking with other people. I have uh, some friends that I've flown with, instructors. Mm -hmm. I'm also in a flying club here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. Um, the Moccasin Flying Club, which is, I think, one of the oldest ones in the country, if not at least Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, have a nice little resource of people there. And after I got the iPad, I now have four people in our club that I know of. There's a few more, I think, five of them actually that have iPads now, and they all have different cases, from out of box cases to mm -hmm. you know Marware cases to whatever. And uh, we were just actually had our board meeting a few nights ago and showed them this prototype and they wanted it that, that, that night. So, <laughs> so, and they've helped me out with a lot of stuff with uh, ideas with how to get, um, you know, features that they kind of wanted things mm -hmm. that they didn't like. Um, so we've made a few, uh, modifications over the past few months with the design itself. Okay. What sort of manufacturing challenges or any sort of challenges you've had with, uh, starting up from an idea, uh, and bring, you know, bringing this concept and idea to, to fruition. Well, it, it was a, like I said before, it was a, this is a whole new process for me as far mm -hmm. as um, running a business. And uh, it is definitely, it was a lot of trial and error, primarily, mostly for cost. My assumption was that we'll have it made overseas and ship them in. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was looking at quantities, um, you know, in the, you know, 10, 15,000 range. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to mortgage my entire life on <laughs> concept for, for right now. So mm -hmm. uh, we eventually kind of got rid of that route and uh, looked for somebody locally. And actually here in Tennessee, there is a, uh, a bag manufacturer up in Bristol, and mm -hmm. they've helped us out a lot. They've been, uh, and actually the, the salesperson I originally spoke with, who then put me in touch with some other people, he actually took some flying lessons a few years back. So he was very, uh, he understood the concept. Other people just didn't really get it. They were kept saying, well, aren't there already cases for the iPad? Well, mm -hmm. yeah, there are. Um, since then, obviously, there have been a lot of other knee boards for iPads right. uh, manufactured. And one of the biggest things that I really wanted was a case that I could keep the iPad in all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to have to take it out of a, a hard shell knee board or a separate case for it um, mm -hmm. just to put it into a knee board or then take it back out and go to the office or or do something else. I wanted to be able to put whatever I want in there and use it. If I wanted to put in that front pocket, put paperwork or notes in there for a meeting or a project that I'm working on, I can do that. I can still use a regular notepad instead of the flight plan planning pad. It's pretty much, it's very, whatever you want to put in there. And that mm -hmm. was the biggest thing. Um, as far as the manufacturing process, it was uh, trying to get my handwritten drawings uh, <laughs> to uh, kind of get both people to see the same, the same stuff, have them mm -hmm. see what I was seeing and for me to understand what they were looking at. Um, and that was the biggest challenge more than anything. Um, with this new manufacturer, we started working with them about July, and it's been 
a slow process. I'm not their only customer, and I understand. I understood that, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been a lot of time and effort to try and get this thing the way everybody wants it and get it at the cost mm-hmm. that we want to do for everybody. We actually have a charity, um, Pilots and Paws, <clears throat> that I've done some flights with in the past, and mm-hmm. we're actually going to take proceeds uh, from each and every iPad that we sell, and we're going to send them to Pilots and Paws. Oh, that's awesome! A donation. Awesome. So. Well, tell Thank us you. how uh, you know. Tell us how folks can get a hold of you, or uh, you know, get in contact with you. What's the website where they can find the Avpad? Well, the website is picsupplies.com. Uh, it is the same. It's uh, PIC Supplies okay. on Twitter, and we also uh, have a Facebook page. Okay. Uh, which is under PIC Supplies. This is uh, Michael Ladd with PIC Supplies and the Avpad. And uh, once again, I appreciate you tuning in today to this first video in our Notice to Airmen video series. And uh, this is Len Costa wishing you clear skies and calm winds. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everybody.